Hey everyone, welcome back. It is time for January favorites. I don't know about you, but January always feels so long to me. I always get the January blues. It felt like it was like three months long. So I'm just really happy. The month is over and we are moving right along. I laid pretty low for the month. I think, you know, we're all kind of recovering from the holidays. We're getting back into the flow of the new year. So I have a mix of old and new favorites. The new releases for this year definitely are coming out now, but I also leaned on some old favorites that I really enjoyed. So let's start with beauty. I did just get ready using as many of the favorites as I could, so you'll see them in action. Speaking of old favorites, a base combo that I've really enjoyed in the last month is this. So this is the Summer Friday Skin Tint in the, sh in the shade 4 and the Merit Foundation Stick in the shade Bisque. I've enjoyed these two products, but I've also enjoyed the technique that I'm using. So I have the Sheer Skin Tint. It is very sheer, it brings down some redness, but it does give me a very filtered look. So it evens over the appearance of pores. It gives you the appearance of really smooth skin, it's dewy but it stays in place all day and then I add coverage where I want with the Merit foundation stick and this is great because I can add coverage around pigmentation usually around my jawline cover up any redness and I can even use this around my eyes and so this has been great because it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a heavy face of makeup I just have more coverage where I want it which is generally how I like it um, today I used the Merit foundation stick on top of the EXA foundation and I tried this last year. I want to say last summer. I used the shade 390 Alley and this was a little bit light for me when I tried it and it was also a little bit too radiant for me. But because it's winter, my skin is a little bit more dehydrated. I used tretinoin, all of that. I pulled it out again and it just looks so beautiful on the skin. Like I feel like my skin looks really creamy and glowy and radiant, but it also stays in place. It feels really lightweight and it does not take much. So I did a thin layer of this with the Merit um, foundation stick to add coverage where I needed. I've been working on an updated um, favorite brushes video or blog post, I'm not quite sure yet. I did do a blog post a couple of years ago and I stand by all of those, but I do have a new favorite. This is the BK Beauty 109 brush and this is the mini version, I think of their 101 brush, which is their big angled, I think they call it their contoured foundation brush. I just really love the size of this. So it's pinched, you can see here, and it's wider and flat in the front and it's cut at an angle. It's both dense but fluffy at the same time. I could use this brush for foundation. I can use it for concealer because it fits under the eye. I could honestly use this for contour, for cream blush, for cream bronzer. It's like the perfect shape. And generally I do gravitate towards smaller face brushes just because they give you a little bit more precision and it's super soft. All of the BK Beauty brushes are and this has become an instant favorite. Getting into some new releases that I have been loving. Half Magic Beauty um, came out with their cheek fluffs and these are a cream powder blush hybrid. So they feel like a cream to touch, but they blend out on the cheeks in this really beautiful, soft, cloud-like diffused way. Um, these are all of the shades they've come out with. I love the edit. They're all beautiful. I especially love this shade Magic Brownie as a kind of sculpting blush, which is how I used it today towards like the back of my cheek. And then I think I went in with this one. I, I can't see the name right now, but these two peachy pink shades have been a major hit for me, but these two are beautiful as well. Even the deeper shades, because this applies in such a diffused way, look really skin-like. And they also came out with a brush. I can't remember the name of it. They call it like something paw brush. It's super cute. So it's really soft. It's round, but it's angled, but it's dense enough to pick up the product and apply it to the cheeks. And it just gives you such a nice blend. I've really, really been enjoying it. Um, I got to go to the A24 studios this month and meet Donnie Davey, who is the founder of Half Magic Beauty, and she's also the makeup artist for Euphoria, which is produced by A24, or they're one of the producers. And I met Donnie, and I said hi to her, and I was like, hi, it's so nice to meet you. I'm Becca, and she was like, I know who you are. I almost honestly passed out because 
she is someone I admire so much. I think her aesthetic and what she's done with Euphoria and Euphoria makeup has made such waves in beauty and especially makeup culture and the way that we experiment with and play with color and glitter and textures. So it was a really cool experience getting to meet her. She's super down to earth, so kind, so generous. And um, it's always nice when you know the people behind the brand are have their heart in the right place and are leading with their heart. And you can really tell that the brand is a passion project for her. Another new release I have been loving are the Tower 28 um, Juice Balms. Yeah, the Juice Balms. They came out with four shades. So they are little stick tinted balms and they're like push up. I did a lip swatch video um, in shorts and I'll include that here as well. They came out with two shades that are a little bit more sheer, a little bit more natural, and these are like a peachy pink and a cooler pink. I'm actually wearing a combination of both today. And they also came out with um, two brighter shades that are a little bit more pigmented. There's Squeeze, which is a bright orange, and what is this called? Drink, which is like a bright cranberry berry shade. Um, I have loved all of them. I've especially worn Mix a lot, which is the peachy shade and the shade Squeeze, which is that orange, bright orange coral, which I know I'm gonna get a ton of wear out of this summer. The formula is pretty thin. I was actually expecting something a little bit more melty and balmy, but I actually kind of like that it's a slightly waxier formula. I feel like it stays in place, especially with the deep shades, they won't bleed out of your lip lines and they do stay in place. They're not the most moisturizing, but they're still very, very comfortable on the lips. They're just not like a classic lip balm. And the combo that I'm wearing today is on top of the Tower 28 One Liners. You guys know I love these, they're super creamy. And they actually finally released these at Sephora. So there are three shades. There's a light pink, uh, kind of medium toned nude brown and a deeper like brownie chocolate shade. My favorite shade is the one I'm wearing now, which is work of art. It's just like a perfect nude for my skin tone. And then an eye combination that's both old and new that I've been loving are the About Face Fractal Eye Paints. You guys know I love the matte shade Capulets. It's been in my favorite one and done eyeshadows. It's a liquid matte that just gives you such a nice diffused smooth base. And it's the perfect like taupe clay sort of shade. But uh, recently About Face repackaged their fractal eye paints in the same tube as the mattes. And specifically, I love this shade. It's called Refract, I'm wearing it right now. And online, it looks like it's going to be a very um, cool toned silver. And it is silver, but it has a sheer base so that if you wear it in a really scattered way, your natural skin tone actually shines through. So for me, it actually ends up looking almost champagne-y because my natural skin tone is a little bit warmer, a little bit more golden. And when it reflects with the silver lighting, it just makes the eye look really wet. And I, today, wore it a little bit more concentrated along the lash line and then I scattered it out towards my brow bone. But you can pile it on and get a more like solid glitter metallic effect or you can really scatter it. Like I take a fluffy brush and I just tap it across um, my lid to get a more diffused glittery look. And these stay in place. I mean, just like the matte shades, these are budge proof. I don't get fallout throughout the day. They don't fall into my eyes. And it's especially this shade that I really, really love. There are a couple other shades in this line, um, in this range that I enjoy, but this is the one I've been reaching for a lot. You guys, Smidge was just meowing at my door. She says, hi. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you really should because that's where all of the Smidge updates happen. But she's a big girl and she wants lunch, but she's gonna have to wait a little bit. Isn't she so beautiful? I love you, Smidge. If you guys don't know Smidge, she's the kitten. Well, now she's a cat now. 
but she's the kitten in my heart, um, that I adopted from Hannah, and Hannah rescued her from her backyard when she lived in LA, Hannah Louise Poston. So um, she's our daughter. All right, let's talk about skincare because things are happening that I'm really excited about. I took a very expensive plunge in December and I ordered the BioEffect EGF eye serum. I did my skincare routine on camera today, so you're gonna see me using it. I have heard incredible things about this eye serum. It's been very, very hyped. It's like $100, but I got it 25% off at some point. And it does go on sale at Skin Store pretty frequently. Um, so this uses, it's called the Age Defying Eye Serum. I'm sure there's like peptides and stuff in here, but it doesn't have retinoids or anything. It's not like an active in that way. So I ran out of my typical favorite, the Niod um, Fractionated Eye Contour Concentrate, which you guys know I love for depuffing. It's especially great if you have hooded eyes like I do that um, can get swollen or puffy if you're tired or haven't drinking enough water or anything. But I just thought, you know, let's try something new. This has given me results that I never ever would have expected from a topical. And I want to temper this review by saying skincare is very subjective, very personal. But you can see I have hooded eyes. Um, sometimes you can see my visible lid, but sometimes, or my mobile lid, but sometimes you can't. It just depends on if I've slept a lot. <laughs> Honestly, just a million different factors. So it's hard to say it's just one thing that's changed the actual shape or the way that my eyelid looks, but it has. If you can see my the fold on my eye, which is called the epicanthal fold for us Asians, um, it's gotten a little bit higher, like a millimeter, but it does make a difference to me. And mostly it's at the outer corner of my eye. When my lid is really hooded, my eyes look a little bit more downward turned because the lid weighs down towards the end of my eye, so you don't see this like open area of skin right here. About two weeks after I started using this, I started noticing my fold was getting a little bit higher and a little bit higher. It's very weird, and I, I couldn't believe it at first. I was like, I don't want to attribute it to a skincare product, because again, it's topical. But I do think this is doing something, and the reason why I tried this is because Vanessa, goals to get glowing on Instagram, I'll link her below. She also has hooded eyes. Um, we have different eye shapes, but she took before and after pictures of when she started using this and her hood also started going up a little bit. So I don't know what's happening, but I'm happy about it and I'm gonna keep using it. And it's been really, really nice. The only thing I don't love is that it comes in a roller ball form. So you, you pump it from the bottom. A lot of product comes up at once. So I actually just kind of lightly tap it. And then I put my finger on the roller ball and use that one like pump and distribute it across both my eyes. And I do use it on the mobile lid. Um, I've been using it morning and night. I might just do it at night because it's kind of expensive, but I've just been loving it. The other half of my eye routine has been the new Dew Skin Oracle Eye Gel. And this also has peptides in it. It's more of a hydrating gel that really plumps up your fine lines. And I've really, really been loving this, especially during the day, because it wears so nicely under makeup, but it does plump up the eye area. It just makes me look really awake and refreshed. It absorbs quickly. It doesn't pill up under makeup. Sometimes an eye cream, which I do like at night, can be a little bit too heavy or it can make my concealer like gunk up if I'm wearing makeup. This does not do that. It works beautifully with their forever eye patches, their reusable silicone under eye patches. And I also love the packaging. It comes in a little tube with a pump. Always love the pump. It really doesn't take much. And this has glycerin, algae complex, and tripeptides. Um, I also do have a code for Dew Skin that I will link below. So the cutest recent packaging definitely goes to FutureWise. 
Um, this is a new brand launch, and I actually have a friend who is a co-founder. Um, she was a friend of a friend who's become a friend, and these just launched in, I wanna say November or December. They only have three products, but the brand philosophy is around slugging. And I'm not even someone who likes slugging, but I do love these products. There are three products in the line. This is the Slug Boost Hydrating Mist and the Slug Cream Barrier Repair Moisturizer. Um, these are also at a great price point. They're in the Mastige mid 20s price point. And they also have like a legit slugging cream. I can't remember what it's called. It comes in a little pot for those of you who like to legitimately seriously slug. It's actually a great um, balm also for like your hands or any dry areas or however you wanna use it. But specifically, I've been loving these. The hydrating mist is really lightweight. Um, the mister is really nice. Look at this. Ooh, nice mister, very fine. And the cream has been a great daytime or nighttime moisturizer, but I've actually really been reaching for it during the day. So it comes in this really cute chubby packaging and the cream texture, it's like that. I love that this sinks into the skin really, really quickly. It is a lotion texture, but it instantly like turns fluid on the skin. So it does give you that like ceramide barrier repair, but it's also not so heavy that people like me who are combo or combo oily can't use it. So you do get that ceramide repair without maybe the overly rich components that sometimes those sorts of creams can have. But if you do want the occlusive uh, experience, their slugging cream is amazing and it's very cosmetically elegant, especially compared to, you know, like Aquaphor or Vaseline. It has a little bit more elegance to it. For something a little bit richer, and especially for my like normal dry skin friends, Make Beauty came out with their Hydroscape Moisturizing Reverse Emulsion in December, the end of December. And I cannot stop using this. If you have tried the U Beauty, the hydrator, that's their emulsion. It's very, very similar in texture to this and like less than half the price of that. The most basic definition of an emulsion is that it's a blend of oil and watery ingredients. So you get emollients, but it's also liquidy and runny. So you can almost think of it as like a milky, lotion serum. <laughs> so this comes out as like a white fluid, but it's also really spreadable and it turns um, into like a lotion consistency across the skin. But it has this like grip to it that is very similar to the U Beauty Hydrator. And that's what I love about it. It feels like it's really holding on to the skin. It does sink in nicely during the day. I'm actually wearing it as a daytime moisturizer today but it gives you this like cocooning experience on the skin. It's amazing in the evening. I use it as a layer underneath a moisturizer or a night cream, or during the day I use it as my moisturizer. Um, it's just such a luxurious experience and I might even like it better than the U Beauty Hydrator because this doesn't have fragrance. The U Beauty Hydrator also has, I think, some exfoliating properties and this is just pure cocooning like love for your barrier it's very cosmetically elegant one of my new favorites for make beauty i can't stop reaching for it speaking of new favorites i did a little sunscreen haul from yes style i stocked up on my claire's spf that you guys know i love it was my favorite of 2022 and i grabbed this one as well and this is the tacobo bio watery sun cream spf 50 plus pa4 pluses it's sheer it's serum like it's actually even even a little bit more lightweight than the Claire's SPF. The Claire's SPF has a more lotion-y consistency, and this is almost more of a gel. It's like a gel cream texture. So I actually feel like if you are more oily, you might even like this better. And I think I'm gonna be reaching for this a lot, especially when it comes into the warmer months. It's just very cosmetically elegant. It's all chemical, it's sheer, there's no fragrance. It just feels very lightweight. All right, a few fashion favorites random lifestyle favorites. Um, I got in this beautiful pearl pendant from Monica Vinader, and I am an affiliate with them. I have a 20% off code, 15, 20% off code. Um, I did 
get this with affiliate credit. I've had my eye on it for a while. I just love the sculptural, um, organic, really like uneven element of this pendant. Um, this was a necklace I already had. This is the Dean Davidson paperclip chain, but I like that you can get the pendant separately. I also got a pair of earrings that are um, of per with pearls of a similar size, and those are beautiful as well. I don't always like pearls. I know they've had a big comeback recently, but I like it in this way where it's like a statement, it's um, sculptural, it's almost like an art piece in and of itself. So I've really been enjoying that. And you guys know I've been on, well, maybe you know, I've been on a journey to try to quit fast fashion. I've been trying to support more small businesses, um, businesses that have more sustainable practices and businesses that don't support sweatshop labor. Um, I, at the end of last year, shopped the Baba Black Friday sale, influenced by Hannah, and I grabbed two things. So I grabbed this vest top, which is actually one of their cotton wool blend knits. So oh, let me just show you. It's like a really boxy shape, but it has a really thick knit to it. It's very textured and I love it. You can wear it layered um, with a shirt underneath, or you can wear it like I am just as a tank. And I also grabbed one of their turtleneck sweaters. I love them and I do get it now. I think I'll get more wear out of the vest because it is the cotton blend and I live in LA, it's a little bit warmer, but I have worn the turtleneck quite a few times and it starts out as this really scratchy, like raw wool. There's actually like pieces of straw <laughs> knit into the sweater. Um, but the more I've worn it in and I've washed it a couple times, the brand actually gives you advice on how to wash it with a little bit of conditioner to soften the fibers. They've just been such a joy to wear and it's reminded me that I want to have items of clothing that feel like a piece of art, that feel like, you know, care and love have gone into it and that tell kind of a story and Baba definitely does that. They're textural, they're beautiful, they're made by artisans, um, they are made in Spain and yeah, I've just really, really been loving my new Baba pieces and I'm gonna have them for a long time. The other three fashion favorites are all about comfort, which tells you something about the kind of January I had. Um, in the Essence sale, I picked up another pair of my favorite Laton sweats. Um, it's Laton, L-E-S-T-I-E-N. Laton is spelled the, the French way. I just thought about that um, clip going around of the, the Miss Universe pageant where the woman says France. <laughs> oh man, okay. Let's focus here. So I've had a couple of Laton pieces. Um, I've had one sweatsuit that's like a tie-dye color, like a sage green tie-dye. And I also have this like Dijon, electric Dijon pair of sweatpants. And so I decided to get a sweatshirt, like a half zip sweatshirt, which you guys have seen and asked about. Um, it's that bright yellow color. And also another sweatsuit in a cognac, like rich chestnut brown color. These are very expensive pieces. Actually, the first time I bought a piece was with Hannah. Oh my God, I keep mentioning her in this video. Hi, Hannah. We were shopping in LA and we both fell in love with these sweats. They're so richly pigmented. The dye and the colors that they use in their fabrics are so unique, very complex, nuanced shades. The fabric itself is a very heavy weight but they have such a nice drape on the body. So all of their pieces are unisex. They're made in LA um, and they're like $250 each per item, which felt crazy to me like in the beginning, but I've realized they go on sale all the time at Net-A-Porter, at Essence, maybe at like Shop Up, My Teresa, those retailers. And so every time there's a sale, I've been scoping them out. And I got these three pieces for like $60 each, which was amazing, super heavily discounted. And I wear an extra small across the board. I have taken some pictures in these, so I'll share them with you. They're just very chic and very sophisticated for a sweatsuit. Like you feel like a fashion girly in a sweatsuit rather than like, I don't know, a bum hanging out at home. 
And they're so nice that I've also worn them out. Like I've worn a hoodie under a coat with some jeans and boots, and that's been a cute look. Um, and the colors themselves are just so richly saturated and beautiful. The inside of the fabric, they're a heavy weight, but it, they almost feel like pre-washed. So they're not fluffy the way that um, a brand new hoodie might feel. They actually have this like worn down feel to them, which is I think what gives the fabric such a beautiful drape and it's very comfortable. It's all, it's like, it's already worn in. So yeah, can't say enough good things about them. I'll link all of the sale pieces I can find below. I never thought I'd be saying this, but my other favorites are my Crocs and I have become that person. I also picked these up in the Essence sale. So these are the platform Crocs and these are, I think they're just called beige or cream. And I resisted Crocs for a long time. You know, I'm very loyal to my Birkenstocks. I have so many pairs of Birks. But I saw these and I think something about the color and the chunkiness really called to me. These are just another pair of house shoes for me, but I would wear them out. I love them. They give me a really nice platform, so I feel a little bit taller and like, I don't know, I just like that little boost. They are super comfortable. I will say the sole is very flat. So unlike Birkenstocks that have really high um, ridges for your feet, these still have ridges, but they're flatter, a lot flatter compared to Birkenstocks. And I do have high arches. So I do find the Birkenstocks fit my foot, like mold to my foot a little bit better, but these are still super comfortable. And I just like them. I think, I don't know if I would like the non-platform ones, but the platform ones feel like a little bit more of a statement. And I like that. The last fashion favorites are my Chantel soft stretch underwear. I won't show them to you. Um, I've had a couple of pairs of Chantel soft stretch, like seamless uh, underwear that I got in the Nordstrom sale, like maybe the last couple of sales. And they are the most durable, comfortable, and like long lasting pairs of seamless underwear that I have. Their soft stretch line is really interesting because there are only two sizes. So there's one size that fits extra small to extra large. And then there's another size that fits, I think, 2X to 4X or something like that. But the fabric stretches so much. There's a lot of elastic in it, but it doesn't feel like it. And they also don't get stretched out if you care for them and just wash on cold, air dry, all of that. So they had an end of year sale and I stocked up. Um, I got a couple of their thongs, their bikinis and their briefs as well. All super comfortable. None of them like dig into the skin. They have a bunch of different colors. And I also grabbed their V-neck bralette, which is also super comfy. I didn't realize that they are padded and the pads don't come out, but the pads are thin and they're comfortable. But they have definitely been a bestseller. I did a blog post about the bestsellers of January, which is everything that like my followers are buying, the most popular items through my affiliate links. So if you're nosy and you wanna see what other people are buying, I will link that below. But I actually placed another order after my initial order because I realized I kind of just wanna phase out the rest of my underwear for the soft stretch line because they're so comfortable. I can wear them like, under yoga pants and not see them or under like a ribbed, you know, tight knit dress and you can't see them. You, they're truly seamless. So yeah, definitely a bestseller. And I know you guys have been loving them too. Two um, homeware sort of things. The first is this, which is that I have become a Stanley girl and this was gifted to me by my mother-in-law and Sean and I both got one over the holidays and they're all we use now. And I get it, okay, I get it. I mean, I've always thought they're cute. I was just like, it can't be that different from like another water bottle. But I like the slim profile. It fits in my car uh, cup holder. Um, they keep your drinks really cold for a really long time and they have a big handle. So, and they're aesthetically very cute. So I get it. The last item is also a Christmas present I received from my parents, which is the Zojirushi hot pot. It's an electric hot pot. So you can use it as like a hot pot for soups, or you can also use it as a grill. And since we've gotten it, we've used it like once or twice a week. So several times this month and it's just perfect for winter but it's also nice for grilling meat 
um, or other things and it just works really elegantly. It's easy to use like all of the other Zojirushi appliances. We also have a Zojirushi um, hot water dispenser and I'm a big tea drinker. I mean, I, I'm a coffee and tea drinker. I drink my coffee in the morning and then I switch over to tea. And it's been so nice to have that as well, especially in the winter, because you can adjust the temperature. It keeps the water in the tank at that temperature, um, which is especially great for tea. And you just push a button and it dispenses the hot water. I'm sure you guys have seen it, but it's gotten a lot of use for me recently. So those are two appliances that I just really love. So that's all for me this month. I would love to hear what your monthly favorites were. I've really been enjoying um, hearing from you guys, your thoughts on like moving away from fast fashion, moving toward um, being a little bit more reflective about our practices around consumption or purchasing or our relationship to our objects and things that we enjoy. I mean, obviously we're all here because we like beauty, we like fashion, we like tactile artistic expressive mediums, but we're also thinking a little bit more deeply about our relationship to those things. So I've really, really enjoyed the, co the conversations that I've had with you in comments. So thank you so much for that. Um, if you're not subscribed already, I would love for you to subscribe and keep hanging out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.